أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Reporting Measurement Model Model Fit, Reliability and Validity IBM SPSS AMOS Series In the last session, we looked at how to report model fit. This is part 2 of the video on reporting measurement model. And in this session, we are going to look at how to report reliability and validity. Now, in order to report a measurement model, there are certain ingredients that we would need. We would need model fit statistics, including chi-square, c-min, cfi, tli, rmsca, and srmr. We will need factor loadings, cron batches alpha, composite reliability, average variance extracted for convergent validity, and for discriminant validity, we will need Forner and Locker criterion along with HTMT ratio. We have already covered this part here, model fit statistics in the last session, that is part one of reporting measurement model. In this session, the focus will be on quality criteria, that is the loadings, alpha, composite reliability, average variance extracted and discriminant validity. Now, before we go on how to report it, let's first run our model again. This was the model that we last built, the confirmatory factor analysis model. We did delete LS5, but for the sake of this video, I have put it back in. So now we have built this model. In order to run this model, first of all, obviously check that you've got your data. Yes, I've got that data. If not, obviously go to file name and you can search your data. Just press OK. Go to the analysis properties. Go to the output. So I need standardized estimates, squared multiple correlation, residual movements, modification indices, correlation of estimates, covariance of estimates. So I've got all the required things in there that I need for my output for now. Now, the next thing is to run or calculate the estimates. So click calculate estimates. Now your model did run fine. All good. Now look at these values here. Now these are unstandardized estimates. So we need standardized estimates and we go to the output again and we will see our standardized estimates. Now before we move on, let's assess the loadings here. Look at this LS5. This is less than 0 0.50. So as explained, this, is, this particular indicator is not actually representing the underlying construct well. So we can actually delete it and this will further improve the model fit. Now, if you do not have a good model fit, there is a video on the channel on how to improve the model fit. Obviously, you use standardized residual covariances, the modification indices, the loadings. In this case, since it's less than 0.5, 0 0.50, we are going to delete it. Where is it? Go to view text. Go to estimates. And go to scalars. Here it is. Standardized regression weights are your loadings. Look at this here, 0.463. This is less than 0.5. For now, we will keep our loadings to 0.5. So let's delete it. We go to our input diagram. We select this erase objects button and we simply delete it. Now we can run the model again to calculate the estimates. So in this case, we are going to use this particular model. Now, how do we report it? Now, in the last lecture, we did calculate the composite reliability, the average variance extracted, the Forner and Locker criterion, and the HTMT value. If you are interested in learning these things again, the description will have the link to that particular video. The focus of this video is actually on reporting these results. So what I've done is to calculate, obviously make sure that you copy the output from AMOS output to Excel sheet so it's easier for you to load these values. This calculator will also be available on my website. Now, how do you report the output in or the output that you get from AMOS? Now, once your measurement model is reported, the next thing is that you have to report your 
construct reliability, your convergent validity and discriminant validity. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is, first we are going to check for cron batch alpha. Now since we are focused on AMOS, I'm not going to check cron batch alpha, but there is a video on the channel to check cron batch alpha. In this case, we are just going to report the composite reliability, which is another measure for your reliability. So let's look at composite reliability. Here it is. So for authentic leadership, it was 0.813. For ethical leadership, it was 0.918. And for life satisfaction, it was 0.891. So it ranged between 0.813 to 0.891. 0.813 to point what was the other value let's have a look 0 0.918 0 0.918 and this is actually above the recommended benchmark of 0 0.70 so in this case we can say that constructor reliability was established so you can create a table to report these statistics but how do we create that table let's have a look at the format of the table so what we do is we go to insert, we go to table, we can do item, its loadings, its alpha, its composite reliability, and its VIF, or rather, sorry, its AVE. We can report VIF and other statistics as well, but for now, let's use these ones. Simply add the number of rows that you want, and let's quickly report one of the construct. So your items, your loadings, your alpha value, cron batch is alpha, your composite reliability and your AV for your convergent validity. So this is how you can create one table to report these different statistics. Now, if you're doing a thesis, obviously, then you can have separate tables and much more detail on all these concepts where you can define these concepts as well, because in thesis, you've got much more space than you have in a paper. So the first one is let's do one and you can do the rest. Let's go to estimates and let's see. We need standardized regression weights because these are our loadings. So we click on it, right click on it, copy it. And we can break in here just paste the table here and let's say we want to copy the first one so authentic one two three for now let's say let's copy this we've got another one here remember authentic four is 0.512 So a authentic leadership and it's 81, 82, 83, 84 and 85. So what is 81? 0 0.713, 82.768, 0 0.713, 0 0.768. 0 0.601, 0 0.601, and the fifth one was 0 0.816, 0 0.816. Where is number four? Why is number four here? Because in the model, while I was working on the model, I may have deleted an indicator, and later I may have added that indicator again. So that's why it's shifted to the end, 0 0.512, 0 0.512. Now this is how you can add loadings for your construct or rather the items in the construct. So where is my alpha value? Obviously you will have to use SPSS for this. So where is my composite reliability? So you go back here. What is the composite reliability? 0.813 for authentic leadership. So I'll add 0.813. Where is my AVE? So here is my AVE. For authentic leadership, it was slightly less than 0.5. So what I'll do is I'll add 0.47. Now, 
So how do we report our next construct? You simply add ethical behavior and simply add the items here, add their loadings here, add the alpha value here, the composite reliability here and the AVEA here. How do you calculate it? You will have this calculator. Now the next step is to report your convergent validity. We do not need this any longer. So we'll delete it. We'll name the table, table two, loadings, reliability, and convergent validity. So we can set this in APS style, control I. Similarly, you can do this for table by removing the borders. Now, one thing here, the average variance extracted values were above the threshold value of 0.50 for all the constructs except for authentic leadership. Now you have to mention this in your text as well. So where you did not get the respective required AVE. And then we mention, however, since the composite reliability was well over the required value, we can conclude that authentic leadership construct was valid. So since your CR value for authentic leadership was greater than 0 0.70 and this was greater than 0 0.40, so you can say that enough average variance was extracted by the latent construct. Moving on, how do you report your discriminant validity? Now we do not need this as well. So in order to report discriminant validity, here is the text. First of all, let's read the text. Discriminant validity in the study was assessed using Fawner and Larker criterion and heterotrait monotrait ratio. Now these are the two different methods to report HTMT. Now according to Fawner and Larker criterion, discriminant validity is established when square root of AVE for a construct is greater than its correlation with the other constructs in this study. Now as we've seen already, now this value which is the square root of a v for this construct. So this is your square root for a v e for a particular construct. This should be higher than these values. This should be higher than this value. Rather than saying this value, this is actually a comparison of square root of a v e within the construct variance with the correlation of that construct with all other construct. So you are comparing the correlation of other constructs with the square root of AVE for that particular construct. So this value that is the square root of AVE must be higher than the correlation of that construct with all the other constructs in this study. So for further detail, please watch that video. However, Fawner and Larker criterion has recently been criticized and a new method to assess discriminant validity that is HTMT ratio is increasingly utilized. In the present study, discriminant validity is not entirely established using Fawner and Larker criterion. However, when assessed using HTMT ratio, all ratios were less than the required limit of 0.85 according to Hensler 2015. Hence, we can say discriminant validity is established. So how do you report this? You can simply, once this is done, you can just simply copy these tables here. So this is your Fawner and Larker criterion. And you can report your HTMT, which we calculated. Here it is. Just simply copy it. It's always a good idea to have uniform number of decimal places so we right click on it format cells number two decimal points is fine okay and then we can copy it and just paste it here and this is your HTMT now if we have a look none of the ratios here are greater than 0.85 so this means your discriminant validity is established so this is how you actually report your reliability 
and validity. First, you have to report your measurement model. Next, you will have to report your construct reliability followed by convergent validity and then your discriminant validity. I hope the video would have helped you understand how to report all these results. Now, since this is a series of lecture, I would strongly recommend that you watch the earlier lectures as well on how to calculate CR, that is your composite reliability, your average variance extracted, your Farner and Larker criterion and your HTMT. I will share the link in the description as well and this calculator will be available on the website. Thank you very much.